I'm John Manzella, and this is the Manzella Report. The U.S.-China trade war has created a great deal of uncertainty, but this we know for sure. It has severely disrupted supply chains. With me today is Jim Trubitz, Vice President of Mohawk Global Logistics, a trade compliance, logistics, and customs broker. Jim, how are you? Good. John, doing great. Jim, we know that there's a great deal of disruption out there, and you must hear from your clients on a daily basis some of the problems they're incurring. How has this trade war impacted them, and what are you advising them to do to mitigate risk? Sure. A um, couple things that came right out of the, the gate on this whole trade war thing was no one before the trade war knew what a customs broker was. We went from unknown commodity to valuable resource overnight. Um, it, it's disrupted supply chains, as you said. It, some of the, the key issues that we saw with this was it, it came quickly and, and gave no one notice. No so one. people had stuff on the water that now were impacted with a 25% duty that they didn't expect. So they had to go to their banks and ask for more uh, line of credit because now there, there was maybe no duty and now they're paying $3 million in duty. So these, these were real costs and real issues that were keeping people up at night. And I'm assuming because inflation hasn't spiked that many of these companies are absorbing the cost as opposed to passing it on. Some can, some can't. Now with a 25% duty, if your margins are really low, you can't. You, you have to pass them. Pass that and, and then there's the issue that a lot of companies were having where they were showing it as a, a separate line in case they got an exclusion later on. And that exclusion was really important. So we, we have five sets of exclusions now. So you, you really do need someone to help you work through this. So what are companies doing to avoid risk? You'd mentioned prior that some are looking for new suppliers. Others are looking to redefine their HS code and recategorize it as a different code that's not subject to duty. What, what are your companies so exactly, telling you? So, you know, they always say, you know, know before you go, you know, do your due diligence. So a lot of companies now are starting to reach out to their brokers and asking for help. So they're saying, we want to bring in this commodity. What's the impact? So they can look at it. They can determine if they bring it in from one country, is there going to be you know, a duty rate? Is there going to be a supplemental duty under 301? Is there any duties under anti-dumping or countervailing? So in many cases, are they switching from Chinese suppliers to other country suppliers where the duty does not apply? Yes, so they're looking at this. But as, as you're aware, you have to really know your land at cost. And up to this point, I think a lot of people just said, okay, the duty rate's 5%, we're just gonna throw it on there and we'll estimate the freight. People are really doing careful calculations now against that supply chain just to make sure that it, it, they know the number. And they're looking at days to transit into the United States. They're looking at all these issues because they don't want to be caught flat-footed. So if they do decide to go with China, mm -hmm. they may have to increase their customs bond. Customs bond is something that U.S. Customs requires every importer to have. And it has to be sufficient to cover the duties and uh, user fees, any things that are incurred with it. So Customs is looking at that because they don't want to be on the hook in case an importer you know, can't make payment. Right, right. Now I understand if you, our U.S. company, for example, is buying and scale large quantities from a Chinese firm, they're getting a pretty good price. If they switch suppliers and say they're looking at three alternative suppliers in Vietnam, Indonesia, the Philippines, etc., they're going to be buying at a higher price. And this, of course, will add a great deal of additional disruption and cost to their end product. And th that's true. And there's a, a, another consideration too. Sometimes the quality in these countries is not the same. So there has to be a careful evaluation. I'm gonna give you an example still, and this is probably one of the more important. A lot of people have, to have quality programs in mm -hmm. place. So they have to make sure this stuff meets a certain quality. So if you're part of something called PPAP, which is what a lot of companies use to certify their products for automotive use, it's not a quick fix. It takes maybe six months to get that part certified in another country. So in the meanwhile, your, your option is to pay the 25%, not import it, pass it on. And, and a lot of companies have already 
they're in the situation where they've already come to an agreed rate for the for the year. Now, we don't know how long the trade war will last. So companies are trying to make decisions whether to make an investment they had previously planned to make, whether they should make it in a different country, whether they should hold on to their cash and not make an investment at all, which affects gross domestic product in the U.S. and all over the world. What are companies telling you in terms of planning? Number one, are they able to plan? In many cases, they can't because things are changing day to day. Exactly. And I think when it came to Mexico, I think it caught everybody flat-footed. Now they're saying, okay, fine, we, we, maybe we could use Mexico as an option. Now they're rethinking that as well. There's not many more options, are there? No, and, and a lot of people have shifted production to Mexico or Canada or some other option because they felt it was going to be part of that NAFTA agreement. So now they're rethinking that as well, and they're not sure what could be the next country to get be on the target list. So to summarize, number one, you will look at various suppliers from other comp countries, from yep. alternate uh, countries that are not impacted by a U.S. duty. That's number right. two, look at the tariff code on your product and see whether or not you can change that so you opt into a different category with no, no duty or a lower duty, correct? That's correct. And so what's been happening with a lot of importers now is they've never really reviewed their tariff classification. It was close enough if it was 5% or whatever the tariff number was. They never really looked at it that closely. Now they're paying attention to it. The second thing that's happening is they're doing tariff engineering. So in some cases, sometimes there's a lower duty rate on parts. So now maybe they're not going to bring in the finished article. They're only going to bring in the parts. So everything's being evaluated on a case by case basis. So in that case, if they don't bring in the finished product, but they bring in the components and then perhaps assemble them in the U.S., assemble them in the U.S. and Mexico, that type of thing? Yep, exactly. So, so, so there is a tremendous advantage, but you have to do the analysis. You, you just can't. So, and, and this is where it takes some time, but better to do this beforehand than to get this surprise later on. And, you know, the duty impact is big. Well, Jim, I appreciate your time. I suspect you're busier now than you've been in years. And, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you.